Hello my Sock Universe! As I said yesterday in my short video, I'm still a little bit heartbroken over Austria's loss against Turkey. I do recognize the game went exactly Turkey's way. You gave them a gift and then it exposed Austria's weaknesses unfortunately, especially since the quick response didn't come and yes they gave it their all and yes there was a big chance. In the end I also stand by the words that I've said yesterday. This Austria team has made this nation very very proud. I think they acquitted themselves very well. They have achieved more than any Austria team in recent memory. Just winning Group D is a huge achievement and yes it seems a little bit sad that you have to go home now. Losing to a Turkey team that you had basically there on the ropes and you just couldn't deliver the killer blow or let's put the policy spin on the Turkey goalkeeper made probably the save of all Euro tournaments. An incredible save at the end to keep Baumgartner out, who is probably the tragic hero of Austria yesterday. He could have had three goals. Didn't work out. He has scored so many as of late, so I don't want to blame him as well. The other positive thing is that we finally got some good games. I mean, the Dutch against Romania, that was a really good performance. This was almost Spain against Georgia stuff, almost, because the Romania were there at the beginning. But the Dutch showed up and it actually looked quite good and we got goals, we had six goals yesterday. This is what I want to see in the knockout stage, not the draws from previous days. Unfortunately, one of the most entertaining sides is already out in Austria. I think the Netherlands against Turkey could be a very entertaining one. The other ones, I am not so sure. So I still maintain that these Euros are rather mid to low level, honestly, on my eternal ranking of Euro slash World Cup tournaments, which are the tournaments that I'm following here on a biannually basis. Before we go in the games, Jersey matchup bingo. This one was easy, everything right. So there's not much I can tell you. I do not like Austria in the current kit with black pants. However, it made sense. I don't understand why we cannot have all red as we did in 2008 against Poland. Other than that, I think it all made sense. Although I'm tempted to start with the Austria game, let's get the Romania-Netherlands game out of the way. It was, as I said, a kind of an entertaining game and great atmosphere. You know, the yellow on one side, the orange on the other side. Although I felt there were total fans in the group stage. Both nations had way more fans in there. But I guess this is knockout tournament football for you, where, you know, there's only little amount of tickets allotted. Which, yeah, can we do something about that? It was a game where Romania put the Dutch under pressure for around 10-15 minutes and if they would have scored there it might have turned differently then the Dutch would have had to come and break down the Romania side although their defense is not that great however as soon as Kakpo goes into the box and just yanks one in in the 20th minute there was only one team that is gonna win that one and that was the Netherlands. The Dutch were then irresistible creating so many chances. Uh, the one that really comes to mind is the one by Xavi Simons where if he just takes a shot immediately it probably is going in but he wants to control it and dribble around and it just doesn't work out in the end. At the halftime with the Dutch lead 2-0 I think it would have been the proper scoreline. The only thing that really annoyed me was when Denzel Dumfries basically body checks a Mogos who clearly is in pain and doesn't receive the yellow card for that. Denzel Dumfries was an absolute threat, but he has a side of the game that I just don't like. At halftime, Ronald Kumo takes off Steven Bergwijn, who has together with Dumfries really worked this right side of the Dutch attack. And you know, Romania were really reeling from that one and brings on Daniel Marlen, you know, to add kind of insult to injury. He's a slightly better player, although he can be very frustrating at times. And the Dutch again, very dominant, creating chances. They actually get the goal through Gakpo. However, there was an offside in the build-up. And it was pretty clear already from the first review. It was actually in the end and much, much tighter thanks to the tip of the toe. But it was correctly ruled out. And I always felt they are now keeping them in play. And if they get a goal that the Dutch, who would have deserved to be out of sight already, would get into trouble. However, it was not to be. Yes, it was also down to Dumfries who feigned a head injury and I really annoyed me when there was a Romanian attack they were going through and he just, ah, there's a foot like, ah, and nah. That should have been a yellow card right there. In any case, tries to make the Romanians have no chance anymore. And then probably the best defender, Dragosin, he's defending Gakpo, but then he thinks the ball is going out and he 
stops defending Gakpo, keeps the ball in play, plays Domal and Tunil. 83rd, 3rd minute. And this is a stupid mistake to Ubeos. And Dragosin has been really, really good at this tournament. And then Marlon makes a run almost through the entire length of the field. And it's 3-0, although I heard now there were uh, shoes thrown on the pitch, so the Romanian goalkeeper had to clean the shoe from the box while Malm was running at him, and maybe this helped majorly in Malm scoring the third goal. Overall, this was a really good Dutch performance. A little bit like the Spanish goal scoring let them down, but if they can keep this up, and yes, Romania is probably not the best opposition, but if they keep that level of performance up, I think the Dutch has at least a semi-final in there, I mean, given the way the bracket turns out. Definitely semi-final in there, but I think they can also reach the final unless Ronald Koeman makes again a stupid coaching mistake. So let's go to what surely was the best game of this round of 16 and probably the most dramatic game at this Euro so far. Am I going too high? I don't think so. Austria against Turkey. The mood here in the country was so positive. Everyone expected a win against Turkey. Everyone overvalued this 6-1 win that we had in March against Turkey. And yes, this was a great performance in the end, but this was a super tight game and it was helped that Austria scored in the second minute already. And when Turkey came on, you hit them on the counter, you made it 2-0 at the half. And then still Turkey were hanging around. As I said, the game would have been probably 3-2, would have been more reflective of what is happening. Add to it, Chalanoglu missing. So the organizer midfield and everyone thought this will be a walkover win for Austria. And it's played in Leipzig, the town where Ralf Rangnick has um, put in a lot of work, where many Austrian players at least have played or are still currently playing. It's a home game. No, it's not a home game. There's so many Turkish fans in there, although I thought the Austrian block was bigger than I expected it to be. Edwin and the Turkish made a firework at the Austrian team hotel the night before, which woke up coach Rangnick, but he claims that none of the, his players even heard that from the kickoff. Austria is attacking, is called out on a counter-attack, give away a corner, and from a corner it's slapstick defending. Demiral, boom, from a short distance, 1-0, 57 seconds. And it was important to tell you that in Vienna, Austria took the lead. Here, Turkey took the lead, and whoever takes the lead has the advantage in this matchup. Especially when Austria did not immediately answer, and they had the chance. Baumgartner putting a shot wide, then a corner kick, where the ball goes across the line and Baumgartner cannot get his foot on there. And once this chance was missed, and this was, I think, the fifth minute, I was exclaiming already, this game is not going our way. It's not happening. Because those are humongous chances. Where honestly, if you make the 1-1, this changes the static of the game. It will be a much more open game, much more to the liking of Austria. But now Turkey could sit back. 5-4-1. <laughs> very very deep and the weakness of Austria is breaking down such a wall because you cannot press them high anymore so you need to find solutions by having good passes and you cannot even risk so much because there was always the threat of a Turkish counter-attack also in there so it was really really difficult and that's why the game then kind of slowed down Turkey looked kind of safe defending Austria. The problem was you were almost too one-dimensional. At halftime, Rangnick brings on Gregoric and brings on Pras. Those were really good changes. Suddenly you had a presence in the, in the box and suddenly you could create chances and you put Turkey under pressure. It was power play. Like in Asago, it was a true power play. But it also has to be said that thanks to the deep defense, Turkey never allowed too many big chances. They seeded the outside to Austria. So Austria whip crosses in and now with the header target man with Gregoric. But they were very comfortable heading it out. And Demiral was the man of the match, if you would ask me, because every header he got to. There was now one chance by Anatovic where he's free in front of the keeper who comes out well and I think Anatovic doesn't look because he would have the skill to just step past the keeper and maybe then put it into the empty net or lob it or whatever. Then there's one run by Konrad Leimer who was tirelessly working, always running, but I always had the feeling he wants to win it by himself instead of looking for other players. I think Anatovic also had one such a situation. In any case, that quickly came over. There was a Turkish counter-attack, another corner, and who heads it in? It was a great header. I mean, he jumps high. Demiral. Demiral jumps high and heads it is 2-0. I was watching with my family and at that point I kind of told the kids, you know, I think that's it. Because Austria have not shown that they can break down this Turkey defense so far. Big daughter went to bed, my wife went to bed. 
my little daughter stayed with me. She said, I believe, I believe. Yeah, good. She believed. And there was a posh cross in and Gregor heads it in in the 66th minute. And it is 1-2. Game on again. And now we found the answer. If we would have found the answer in the first half, I'm pretty sure Austria would have gone through. Honestly, there were also a few other changes. Linhardt was walking on a second yellow card, then took off Leimer, brought on Grilic to... We did not have as much oomph in midfield, but we didn't need it anymore. And Grilic is a much more fine passer. So I think it all made sense what Ralf Rangnick did. And Austria threw everything but the kitchen sink at Turkey. But it was mostly crosses in and you know, when you get to the header, it just didn't quite work out. But it was immense pressure, especially the 15 minutes after the goal. Add to it the rain, add to it the atmosphere. It was edge of your seat stuff. Me and my little daughter, we were holding hands together. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was actually fun to see. But then the cramps for the Turk started and for once, I really believe this was not feigning injury. If you saw Kirk Chu clearing the head one ball and then immediately on the back. They were done. So they needed to add a little bit more of pause for them. So they bring on some players. They take a Gula, Yildiz, Akte Kogel comes on and so on. It broke Austria's rhythm a teeny bit. Austria still, I mean, Baumgartner gets his head on the ball, but cannot place it well. I wish there was, for instance, Gregoric there. So there were not many great chances for Austria, but the pressure was there. And just when you thought in stoppage time, yeah, that Turkey is going to score now, Pence put in a great save. The big chance for also Baumgartner. Picture perfect header, everything right. Maybe he could put a little bit more than what he left. It's in the 95th minute, it's literally the last chance of the game. Glorious chance. And I don't know how Mert Gunok is doing that, but he gets a hand on this header and saves it. An absolutely incredible, unbelievable save. To keep Austria out, a few seconds later, game is over, and you could see Turkey. <laughs> they all fell to the floor. They defended with their lives and I have to give them a whole lot of credit for that. I also think Austria gave it their all in, the, in this game. Afterwards, the um, mood kind of was, they all couldn't believe that it's over. But again, Austria's weakness is breaking down an opponent that is defending. And this was always my fear. And although Turkey seemed to be open, giving Turkey the advantage early on. It was too much of a struggle and unfortunately it did not work out. And unfortunately Austria, and I'm not saying this as an Austrian, I think one of the most entertaining sides to watch is already out of the tournament, which is not good for the tournament. On the other side, with Turkey, you probably keep one of the more entertaining sides as well. Turkey have been part of probably the two best games of the tournament. They win against Georgia and now they win against Austria. This now sets up the bracket. We already knew Spain against Germany, Portugal against France. We have now Netherlands against Turkey. I think that's gotta be a fun game. The winner will play the winner of England against Switzerland. If it all works out as projected, we get some really nice semi-finals, at least by name. Spain against France, Netherlands against England. If it goes by form, even if it's Germany against France, I think this would be a great one. Or Portugal against Spain would be a great one. Of course, there's also the threat of having a Turkey-Switzerland semi-final and there's a serious needle there between these two nations as well. If there's at least one positive, one immediate positive from Austria's exit of the tournament is that I finally can embrace the Dutch. This has been annoying me the entire tournament because the Dutch were in the same group. We were in a collision course. I barely wore Dutch jerseys because I saw them as a potential enemy. Now I can fully embrace them again and I finally can wear this orange shirt that is hanging here to my side. So at least something there. Quarterfinals will happening on Friday and Saturday. So no Sunday games, have that in mind. We start out with Spain against Germany. That's the big one. That's the one I'm looking forward to. Portugal, France, not so great. England, Switzerland, don't expect much data, but Netherlands, Turkey. So we have the first one, the last one. I think those will be box office stuff. The other ones, I'm not sure what to get out of this. Any case, please let me know your thoughts on the games yesterday. At least the action was good. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.